Shalom and good morning, uh, warriors of Eagle and the Street. Hold on to me, don't let go. And me, you can do and go home. I will return for you. I will return for you. My darling, my bride. That was uh, Dawood Ar Yehudi, or Dawid Ar Yehudi, uh, Return for You. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, that he, uh, he also sings uh, Joy of Yah, and that's an awesome song. Um, my, my kids used to love it. Um, this is video number seven of Beguiled Eden to Armageddon. Um, we are on another chapter. But the chapters are split into sections, just like um, Brother Lou's book is, uh, books are split into sections. So, like, see, this is a section, and then it goes on to the, another section here. So that's I split the videos into sections the best I can. Okay, so we're in Celestial and Terrestrial Lamentations. And then this section is Days of Sorrow, Changes in the Sun, Moon, and Stars. Rare planetary alignments, starting in the latter 1990s, have continued to manifest themselves right up through today. New comets are increasingly being discovered as well as distant galaxies, which scientists propose might be filled with potential planets like Earth. News that our closest galaxy, the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy, is being gobbled up by our own Milky Way galaxy has brought questions as to whether Earth was originally part of the Milky Way or really part of, of Sagittarius Galaxy. Advanced technology is allowing us to peer into the cosmos like never before using lasers and infrared as well as x-rays and high-powered telescopes. Space rocks and M giant stars are coming out of nowhere. Due to movements of the Pleiades and other points in our heavens, or Shamayim, using them as, a ref as reference points are no longer mathematically sound. Everything is changing. Space missions of NASA's Hubble and WISE, as well as their Mars rovers, along with Herschel and Planck missions of the European Space Agency, etc., are causing astronomers to have to rewrite old theories due to un unexpected data being received about our sun, moon, stars, planets, Milky Way galaxy, and universe in general. Newly discovered data, our Milky Way is composed of nuclei, recently rocked the laws of high energy physics. Wise and Planck are investigating these charged particles and how they are changing our galaxy, especially our sun. This is important because our galaxy becomes more affected by our sun, so does our DNA, and especially our pineal glands. If a change in electromagnetic structures of our universe is beginning to fluctuate, it will throw everything into a state of disequilibrium. Earth's top space agencies are very aware of some strange things, very aware some strange things are indeed happening in the sky. Um, let me see here affecting the earth. Sorry about that. Um, I had to answer a comment. Um, it popped up on my phone. Um, okay, so Earth's top space agencies are very aware some strange things okay, are happening in the sky affecting the earth. Yes, that's where we were. They have launched numerous satellites, probes, and newly designated telescopes to gather data to try and figure out this dilemma without causing public alarm. While NASA's manned missions into space came to a halt, other robotic missions have increased. For example, in early 2012, Planck discovered a mysterious haze of microwaves. Europe's Rosetta spacecraft was on its way to intercept a comet. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, Chandra X-ray, or Chandra X-ray, it starts with a CH, um, Observatory and Suomi, 
NPP Polar Orbiter were br bringing in loads of new discoveries. Their twin gravity recovery and interior lunar GRAIL, spelled all capitalized, spacecraft began mapping the moon's far side while NASA's Fermi telescope was detecting gamma rays in deep space and their interstellar boundary explorer IVEX was observing alien particles entering our solar system. NASA's Kepler mission hit a big streak in early 2012 by discovering 11 new solar systems with 26 planets. ESA's Venus Express spacecraft was also making discoveries that were quite puzzling as they found Venus's rotation was slowing down. On the ground, the Apex Atacama Pathfinder Experiment Telescope in Chile was viewing and analyzing dust data from stars. A group of three satellites called SWARM, all in capital letters, um, like a swarm of insects or something, um, launched in July 2012, began constantly monitoring Earth's magnetic fields, which have been seriously flux fluctuating. Then in January 2012, it was Sorry, it was, excuse me, it was discovered Earth was losing its radiation belt due to an enormous increase in our sun's solar activity. During 2013, Planck, as scheduled, released data it, it has been gathering to give insight into origins of the universe. Amazingly, some information already collected points to truths written down by our ancestors that have been dismissed as myths concerning cycles and serious earth changes, as well as changes in our sun, moon, and stars prophesied to occur at the end of the age. For example, climate warming on earth has been blamed on man-made pollutions, but data from NASA's surveyor on Mars says this exact same thing is happening there. So what is causing it on Mars then? Space aliens uh, driving their little space cars? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Mars ice caps are melting at increased rates, just like on Earth. But Mars has no man-made pollutants, causing their warming problem. Something else is generating climate changes on Earth and Mars, which appears to be a universal ph phenomenon, also affecting other planets. <clears throat> These ever-increasing signs of change on Earth, as well as in our moon, sun, and stars, are fulfilled are fulfillment of scriptural prophecy about a coming apocalypse. Back in 2009, Spanish scientists claimed Pluto was being affected by a brown dwarf positioned in Sagittarius, which was also affecting Jupiter's orbit as well as other planets in our solar system. Around the same time, there began to be an unusual growth of dark spots noted on Pluto. Saturn is now experiencing auroras. Jupiter and its moon, Io, are interacting so much their magnetic fields are increasing volcanic activity on both of them. I didn't even know there was volcanic activity on Jupiter. Wow. Uranus is experiencing increased growth in its mag magnetosphere. Light intensity from Neptune has increased. Mars' atmosphere shows great changes and warming. Venus is undergoing visual and chemical changes as well as slowing down in rotation. A sodium gas atmosphere on our moon is growing. Polar shifts have occurred on Neptune and Uranus, and it makes one wonder if Earth will likewise soon shift. Every planet, including Earth, in our solar system is heating up from, from some outside source affecting our sun. Something very significant is taking place as everything around us and, and including our biological states are changing. Our sun released solar flares displacing Earth's geomagnetic axis by 19 degrees during 2011, which also increased Earth's average seismic activity as compared to 2008 st statistics. It appears something like a brown dwarf might be bringing in an increase of asteroids from the Oort O-O-R-T cloud. Many theories are emerging contending our solar system is binary and contains other planets. Could such a brown dwarf be linked to returning planet Nibiru, mentioned in ancient Sumerian cuneiform, 
or is it is it a star John the Revelator called Wormwood, which would appear during Yahuwah's great wrath? One thing is for certain, something strange is out there lurking due to so many planetary changes. NASA's probes are trying to give astronomers answers by peering at our universe's edge, hoping to determine reasons behind so many recent disturbances. One such probe nearing our sun made history on Thursday, March 17th, 2011, by entering Mercury's orbit and sending back images of its surface. An astrophysicist <clears throat> began finding that planets in our solar system were all severely re reacting to fluctuations in our sun during sun cycle 24. Solar flares can wreak havoc if their intensity grows. For example, a solar storm in 1859 during solar cycle 10, known as Carrington event, crippled the telegraph system. Oh, wow. I never knew that. <laughs> Fear is escalating of a, of a repeat type of storm has, as, as increased sun flares are presently breaking records, especially one in late November 2012 called a tsunami because it was so large NASA's cameras could not fully capture it on film. An international crisis could occur if solar flares were to knock our, out computerized systems used in satellites around our world. <clears throat> These satellites control so many daily functions that if disabled they would set us back 20 years, if not more. A prime example happened in September 2012 the year that everybody thought that the world was going to end. When the GOES-13, when the GOES-13 weather satellite failed, and NOO, or no, sorry, NOAA, all in capital, was unable to track e neither hurricanes nor weather changes on the East Coast. Fortunately, they had a replacement already in place, and GOES-14 picked up the slack. On October 9, 2009, NASA's Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite L-Cross double impacted our moon searching for water. Unfortunately, while everyone was watching, cameras on L-Cross conveniently failed. It seems strange that loss of cameras and even space probes for no apparent reason have, have plagued NASA's missions, especially to Mars. In fact, pictures available for public review taken during 1976 by Viking missions are better quality than photos of Mars from NASA's Phoenix mission in 2008. Is there a conspiracy? Strange cover-ups concerning planets have been going on for some time, it seems. In his book, Mars, the Living Planet, Dr. Gilbert V. Levin claims his microbial radio res respirometry found life on Mars during NASA's Viking mission. Dr. Levin also reveals original pictures that were sent from Mars, looking identical to Arizona with a blue sky. Wow. He further states the viewing monitors at NASA were intentionally, cha intentionally changed to settings showing Mars sky and landscape as orange and red. Why? It does seem strange NASA changed the color back then, because in late 2012, when Curiosity, NASA's Mars rover, landed it, landed, it showed exactly what Levin had contended all along. The Mars landscape looks like Arizona with blue skies. So why has NASA been hiding this fact until now? That's a really good question. <clears throat> Dark Mission, The Secret History of NASA, co-authored by Richard C. Hoagland, a former NASA consultant, and Mike Barra, a aerospace consultant, also reveal a strange cover-up story by NASA even earlier concerning our moon. These professional men claim in 1969, Dr. Ken Johnston, manager of Apollo Missions Photography, saw astronauts took, a, an, an, took of ancient geometrical ruins on our moon. Um, what? Okay. Sorry, guys. Okay. NASA ordered him to destroy these images, but instead he kept them to prove what he had seen. His photos clearly show for vertical geometric pillars and a crossbar. There are also other researchers who speculate he, we never went to the moon and the entire moon landings were hoaxed. 
Could geometric pillars and crossbars be props holding up black curtains of a film set? Or are they really strange structures on our moon? Either, <clears throat> either way, real truth about our universe is being skewed by NASA. When presented to the public at large, which, by the way, is being paid for through hard-earned tax dollars, it is, it is past time we demand 100% disclosure for all our money they spend. Dangers from meteorites began increasing when Bill Clinton was president of the United States. He was informed by his staff that incoming enemy missiles had been fired at America during February 1994. Instead, it was a huge meteoroid traveling into USA airspace that exploded. What were thought to be warheads were in fact fragments from that explosion. If this inbound meteoroid had not disintegrated, Earth would have, ex would have experienced massive devastation. Our next threat came in May of 1996, when another near-Earth object, 300 meters in size, barely missed Earth. It was discovered only three days before Earth was almost in its direct path. Near-Earth objects are increasing as we, as we continue to be plagued by huge rocks seemingly coming out of nowhere. Comet Hart Hartley 2 came very close to Earth in December 2010. Although photographed by NASA's Deep Impact spacecraft, it remains a mysterious comet. An influx of new comets was also recorded during December 2010. Then on February 4th, a comet called 2011 CQ, the size of a small car, passed Earth by 7,366 miles, meaning, meaning it was closer to Earth than our television satellites. Asteroid 2011 CA7 also the size of a compact car, flew only 64,300 miles from Earth just a few days later. An asteroid called Ap Apophis, discovered in 2004 by NASA, was reviewed by Russian scientists in 2011, who claim if it, if it stays on its present path, it could directly impact Earth's satellites or actually hit Earth in 2029. It's not far away. Earth has been really fortunate, but, but one day there will be a star called Wormwood, which scripture says delivers a direct hit. In 2010, a huge Arctic doomsday vault began receiving seeds in preparation for such a direct impact. This huge facility called... I, how do you pronounce something that starts with an S and then the next letter is a V? Svalbard Sval, Sval Global Seed Vault. Um, or if you take the S off, it's Svalbard um, Global Seed Vault with, was built in Norway and houses seeds of over 525,000 crop varieties from around the world. In the event, Earth suffers a global doomsday. It was constructed deep within a mountain to withstand variations in sea level and or any nuclear explosions which might occur. Like it says in scripture that uh, they'll be hiding in the mountains. <laughs> Only dignitaries are allowed to visit the location and much about Project Ark, like Noah's Ark, is very secret. Do powers who rule our world know an end of days is drawing near? Do they really believe they have the wisdom and technology needed to survive Yahuwah's great wrath using their giant safety deposit box hidden in a mountain? This is the very same tactic the Sumerians' Epic of Gilgamesh claims evil giants did when trying to send their seed through Noah's flood. Their ark sank. More on Gilgamesh is explained in great detail in um, Dr. Joy's earlier book, Eden, the Knowledge of Good and Evil, and then the beast number. When birth pangs of Matthew 24 begin, everything will be affected, and all creation will groan just like a woman in travail. No seed vault is going to survive Yahuwah's coming great wrath. The next video is going to be The Sky is Falling. Like the Henny Penny um, thing. This one is like two, four, six. This one is like... Um, five and a half pages so this one might take me like a half hour to make a video of but um it's very interesting and it does have scriptural references
for the sky is falling um, part of this uh, series here. Um, now I'm kind of wishing I would have gotten the, the three volumes of this because she has three volumes of this plus she has Eden to Armageddon, um, that one that I just read to you about, The Knowledge of Good and Evil, or no, it's Eden, The, the Knowledge of Good and Evil, um, triple six. Um, but um, later I'm going to have to make the rest of my videos um, for you guys because um, I have a ton of homework and I feel like such a dud because I'm in a Christian worldview class and I can't even really pass a quiz like it doesn't make sense to me. It's probably because I don't understand the material when, it, when it's about um, certain terminology that Christians use and like I, one of the quizzes I got a 40 something and I think the last quiz I didn't look back to see but I think I either got an 80 something or 70 something on it. But I know it brought my grade back up to uh, like a B. But I am a dean, a dean's list student, so like I'm, um, they they call it the presidency list where I am at. But um, I feel really down on myself when my grades really low. When I first started the class, it went down to a D like very quickly because I took a quiz and failed it miserably. And every week she has a quiz, so. I'm on my third week of class with her, and I'm not really enjoying it that much, <laughs> even though, like, I am learning stuff that, um, could, that pertains to Yahuwah as well, like, it's, it's stuff that I've learned in the past, like, from, like, I've already read through Genesis a few times, and, I don't know, like, their textbook, it just explains it a lot differently. Okay, so now it's time to praise Yahuwah. <laughs> All right. Yahuwah is with me. Yahuwah is for me. Yahuwah is greater than all of these things. If all of Him is for me, then who can be against me? No weapon. Formed against me shall prosper. No trap from the wicked shall prosper. No snare from the devil shall prosper. Yahoo knows who are his. Do your utmost. To show yourself approved, be ye not deceived by wolves in sheep's clothing. For in the last days there will be blasphemers and evil doers. Okay, that was part of the last days song. I posted it on my channel if you guys want to listen. Um, I don't think I sung it as well as I just did now, though, but um, it's okay. Um, it's all praise to Yahuwah. Um, I love you all so much with an everlasting love as our Abba Yahuwah and the Shamayim loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.